Hey guys, okay, so I have tried to retape this video at least fucking 13 times. I keep going in different directions, so I'm just gonna go all out. Here it is, like it or not, sorry I don't know what to tell you. So everyone keeps asking me why I haven't made a video about Brendan yet. So tonight's my video about Brendan. Unless you've been living under a rock, or you crawled into a mine hole, or you're like in a time zone, uh, and I'm freezing, in a time zone, then you would know what happened this week with Brendan. Just for anyone that doesn't know, Brendan was supposed to be out of jail. The state appealed it, Duffin overruled it, which was awesome. It was like the biggest fuck you to the state. Then the state went higher and went to the appellate court that's actually deciding Brendan's appeal. And they won. So Brendan will not be home and he is now stuck in prison. I understand it to the point that in all eyes of the law, Brendan's a murderer. What we think doesn't matter. He's a murderer. And it, a judge is supposed to, I'm not saying they always do, um, but they're supposed to base a decision strictly on the law. The appellate court is at the highest level of sticking things to the law and not what they think or what their opinions are. Duffin made a ruling that Brendan's confession is false. What he didn't say is that Brendan didn't do it. That's where the appellate court says, okay, well, the confession may be thrown out, but that's what the appeal process is for. And I think a lot of people are misconstruing what Duffin said. At no time did Duffin say that Brendan was innocent. At no time did Duffin say that he did not commit this crime. What he did say is that the evidence against him is useless and that the um, confession was completely unconstitutional. Now, we all watched how unconstitutional uh, Lachinsky was and Duffin didn't do anything about it. So the laws have to stick to exactly the way they are if anything is going to be done. So I don't blame the highest court of Wisconsin for doing what they did. I try to look up, I didn't find too many, but I couldn't really find many cases where somebody was out on bond after 11 years for a murder and was allowed bail just to get out um, after serving time. It's, it's not the norm. They were doing, Duffin was doing it for Brandon because he believes he's innocent, but he, he can't prove he's innocent yet. And it's three judges in Wisconsin at the higher court against one Duffin. And so far Duffin has been the only person in Wisconsin to be able to do anything or even stand up to them. So, I mean, it's amazing how much Duffin has changed this case for Brendan. And I think it's absolutely awesome. But on the flip side, is Brendan coming home really beneficial to Brendan? And I know, believe me, I've been in jail, but I know that 11 years, okay, so it's 11 years. What's another year, if need be, where Brendan gets exonerated, because we all know he's innocent, but Brendan gets exonerated comes out a free man, no probation, no parole, no nothing, no carrot dangling over his head. Much easier to live than people that come out on probation or parole and have this carrot dangling over their head. So what happens if Brennan comes home for Thanksgiving? Well, this is where things get fucked up. And this is where I'm not walking on eggshells anymore because I'm fucking done with the drama. I'm done with the fake accounts. I'm done with the sock accounts. I've had it. I've had it up to my head. Okay, I was gonna say something else, but I'll be down there, so. All right, so now let's look at what's transpired if he comes home. Brendan comes home, he's coming home to an extremely dysfunctional family. Brendan is coming home to a place that he's not wanted by his stepfather. Brendan is coming home to a place where his stepfather has adamantly said, I do not want Brendan living here. Scott, whether he's a narcissist or not, I don't know. What I do know is that he's an abuser. Whether he's physical, mental, psychological abuser, I have no idea. I don't know the man, I don't wanna know the man, but I do know that he's a textbook abuser. I also know that Barb is a textbook abusee. She's a victim. She's a victim of an abuser. 
that is blatantly obvious. It's the way she covers for him everything. And honestly, I've been out of their group since March. So I think since like my first video. I've been out of Carla's group since March. I don't care what the family thinks of me. I'm never going to meet these people. I don't want to meet these people. I don't care what the fuck goes on in their life. I didn't do this for them. I'm not here for them. Therefore, I don't give a fuck. So I'm going to call it like it is. Brendan coming home to a house that you have an abuser and a victim, all she does is cover up for Scott. I have seen her, and I'm going to say this, I don't really care. I have seen her stick up for Scott and say stuff about me, like me talking about Scott or ask me not to say this or ask me not to say that. I've seen it because she's covering for Scott. But when I said that stuff about Brendan, when I was joking around my friend that the whole fucking world knows, but even so, when I said that, do you know not one word came back to me from Barb? I did not get anybody telling me how I should keep, you know, Barb is this or Barb is that or why did I say this? Nothing. I'm not saying she didn't say anything. I'm saying that nothing came back to me as much as it does. God forbid I say something about her precious Scott. That speaks volumes. Once I saw that and realized that and then recently got more shit how, you know, people should tell me not to talk about Scott. Why the fuck not? Because you're an abuser and he's, I'm sorry, because you're an abusee and he's an abuser. And that is not a safe place for Brendan. I do not doubt for one second, one millimeter of a second, that Scotty would keep his guns in the house, that Scott would do whatever the fuck he can to get Brendan in trouble, just like he did the first time. And I don't believe anything would ever change. I really, truly don't. I think that he would smoke pot in the house, that Brendan is not allowed to have pot around. And there's this... A uh, carrot dangling over his head because one wrong move when you're out on bond you're going straight back no questions asked and the second an abuser will get jealous he's going right back Brendan doesn't need that kind of overhead and you know everybody thinks how wonderful they are and how nice they are and I'm not saying they're not nice people I don't know them I don't care to know them they're not my type of people but the injustice that went on for their son, for her son, I can't say his son, um, and I do feel bad for her, I honestly truly do, but it's really hard to feel bad for a victim that is consistently sticking up for an abuser. Everybody on the outside can see what a blatant piece of shit this man is. And why am I on this kick lately is because of what I saw went on this last week. I have been friends with Jax for a long time, underground, like nobody knew we talked because it was like our secret friendship because she didn't want to get Barb upset and I always respected her and I love Jax and I've talked to her for months already. I never got close with Amy because Amy was doing the right thing by Barb and by um, Scott. So Amy, I was the devil to Amy and I was cool with it. I never spoke to her. When I saw what transpired this week, I was so disgusted. And again, I didn't know her. Amy or Jax do not need a spokesperson. They don't need me speaking for them. This is about me. I am speaking my opinion. Amy has been there thick and thin through this whole nightmare for the last like eight months. She lived and breathed this case. She lived and breathed Day uh, Dayton, that's my son. Brandon, the, her and Jax both, Jax put a lot of money of her own money into it. And I mean, these two are, have gotten the same shit as I have. I mean, they've gotten shit talked about them, records pulled up, bad show, oh, this one now, like, shut the fuck up. Who cares? Um, you know, who cares about your past? I'm sure every single fucking person has a past. And if you don't, you're probably not into this case. Um, me and Christine from Family Adam were talking about that. Almost everyone that I've spoken to has some kind of fucked up past um, and or just fucked up something in their life. Either they were abused, they're drug addicts, whatever. I've been all the above. But it's not beneficial to, I don't know the right word I'm looking for, but I just, I think it's so sad. 
that what they did to Amy and it's wrong on every fucking level. What they did was wrong. This girl has been there for eight months. And then at the very end, when they think Brendan's getting out, it's, Oh, fuck you, Amy, you lied. Personally, I think Scott is the one that sold the fucking pictures to TMZ to get the money and then blame Amy. I really believe that. And again, up until like three days ago, I never even spoke to Amy. I knew nothing about Amy. For all I know, she talked shit about me and she hated me because I talked about Scott. But this was a girl who did bent over backwards for them, did everything for them. And what did she get? She got a big fuck you right in the ass from Scott. You don't think that Scott would do that to Brendan? You don't think, I mean, they did everything. Amy did everything. They did interviews. They did, they wanted her there. They wanted this, they wanted that. And then all of a sudden, boom, fuck you, Amy. That is so not right, but it speaks volumes as to the abuse that I'm talking about. And it speaks volume as to the type of person that Scott is. Brendan is not safe around Scott when he's got a carrot dangling over his head. Personally, I don't think anybody's safe around Scott, period. But that's neither here nor there. So to finish up, because it's like way longer than I thought, because I kind of got sidetracked. But to finish up, um, I just I just wanted to really state in my own voice, in my own opinion, why I believe that Brendan is better off in jail. And I hate to say it. No, but like Marty Tankliff said, nobody's better, nobody innocent is better off in jail. And he's right. They're not. But when you don't have a functional family who's going to keep you safe when you're home, yeah, you are better off in jail. That's why I re I can't even fucking say it right. Re revitism, whatever. Um, people going back to jail is much higher in um, certain groups than it is in other groups. And it's really sad, but some people just, they keep going back. And that's the reason because they don't have a supportive family. And I am more worried about Brendan coming home and getting fucked over by Scott or the police or both, or maybe they're both be conjunction together. Who knows? But that worries me a fuck load lot more than him being in jail for, let's say another year. I hate to say even if it's two years, but it's once he comes home, he's free and he can live his life and not have this carrot dangling over him. So sorry for guys, if I insulted anyone, I'm, and I'm not trying to, and I'm not trying to call anyone out. I'm not trying to make any more haters, but I just, somebody had to stop walking on eggshells. And I feel like everybody walks on fucking eggshells around here. And then everybody just, you know, chatters in their own little groups. No, stop. Let's just stop walking on eggshells. Say what you've got to say, say what you feel and stop with these fucking fake accounts because they're driving me nuts. Someone always gives you up. See, here's a hint. Yes, you were giving up Gina. Um, and I'm just, I'm tired of the fake fucking accounts. All right. So that's all I have to say. I uh, hope you guys have a great night. I'm off tomorrow. Maybe I'll make another video if some exciting news comes out and I'm sure this video is going to get some hates, but again, I'm not trying to down anybody. I'm not trying to hate anybody. I'm not trying to insult anybody. What is best for Brendan is staying safe behind bars where he can't be touched. That is my honest opinion. And that is why I have my honest opinion. So don't forget to check out Sean Atwood and everybody else's videos. And um, that's all I got for you. Have a good night.